Hello, brethren. It is good for us to be here. This is a true saying. Well, I'm going to share with you what I've been praying for. Is that the Lord would move you. He would move you closer to him. If there's anything that can move you closer to him, it's having a fuller realization of the Father's love for the Son. See, this, this pulls you closer to the Son. It does. It causes you to love the Son. It's what we need. We need to love the Son. Well, I want to make a proclamation that the Father loveth the Son. God is satisfied with Jesus, Amen. whether you are or not. You say, I, I don't want to offend anybody, but this is the truth. This is the truth. We, we want to. See, we've come here today because we want to be satisfied with Jesus in everything. Yes. See, so this is not something that's foreign to us. You know, and I, I don't want to come across as as making anybody feel heavy. This is what we want. This is our heart's desire that we would be closer to the Lord. So if it comes across as an exhortation, then receive the exhortation. John 5, 19 through 21. Now the text is right in the middle of this. Um, but those are scriptures around there are worth placing it where it belongs. Then answered Jesus, remember he just got done healing somebody on the Sabbath day. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater things, greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Now what we want to do today is extract the Father loveth the Son from that text. Um, the fullness of the meaning of that text really I, I think would, wouldn't really satisfy what, what I'm here for today. It means a lot. I, you, you do. You got probably 10, 15 sermons right there. This is a this is a weighty part of scripture here. I mean, here you got the Pharisees that are wanting to kill Jesus because he he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. I mean, you think, well, who would do that? Religious people would do that. But you see, the Father wouldn't do that. He said, I the Father shows me. And he acted on that. Yes, he did. The father loved the son because he did that. Mm -hmm. Now in the ages past, before he was the word, before he was made flesh, before the word was made flesh, the father loved the son. Amen. He was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Proverbs 8 Verse 22, I, I pondered, how do you say this? And the Lord showed me, I've already said it. Just want you to get up there and just repeat what I said. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. That's real. He belonged to the Lord and the Lord belonged to him. Before his works of old. Before. The Father loved the Son. Before anything that was created, He loved Him. The Word. I was set up. He, see, he was preferred. He was the center. From everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. See, Jesus is preeminent. It isn't just that the Father has placed him at a, 
a, a point of preeminence. He is preeminent. The Father loveth the Son because the Son is altogether lovely. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. Think about that. Why? Because he was worthy of being brought forth. See, the, this isn't just a decree. This is a proclamation. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. It was made a spectacle for everyone to, to look on. See, as you see him, you become like him. That's why Jesus, he needs to be placed in the forefront. Amen. And if he is, you'll become like him. If you see him as he is, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, he loved him. See, I'm making a point that he didn't have to do anything. You know, this is... Now, he did a lot of things. But I'm saying this is who he is. And he did things because of who he is. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, and when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight. He delighted in the Lord Jesus as the word, rejoicing always, always before him. The Father loves the Son. Now we read in John 1, we see this, what the Lord's done. In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. There was never a time when they weren't together. See, this, the Father loves the Son. He loves Him. All things. You realize that all things were made by Him and for Him? All things. That means that there wasn't anything that was made that he didn't make. In him was life. I wish, who are we going to prefer? This one in whom embodies life. And the life was the light of men. God's never done anything without the Son. He never will do anything without the Son. See, this is... This is God's proclamation. We're just, we believe it. And it's accredited to us for righteousness. Yes. The word was made flesh. Sounds kind of violent. It was made flesh. This isn't something that would have naturally happened. God entered into the picture. And the word was made flesh. And it accomplished the purpose that God sent it to. It has convinced us that God's right. It has conveyed the proper message. And if we see things the way God sees it, we'll love the Son. Amen. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. Prepared a body for him, one that could suffer. One that could experience joy. One that could experience grief and agony. One that could die. Jesus was real enough, he could die. He came into the world to be an offering. The Father loved the Son. And he's given all things into his hand. He just didn't come here and then God just didn't take, pay any attention to him. No, he gave me all things into his hand. He's going to accomplish my purpose. Behold my servant, whom I uphold. See, God never left him. 
No, no, he, there came a time, but see, this is, we're talking, he, he had a work to do. Whom I, I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. Yes, see, the Father delights in the Son. He delights in him. And I put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment unto the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Why? Because the Father loves the Son. See, there's, these are points. You're like bullets. A bruised reed shall he not break. Have you ever been that bruised reed? I can guarantee you Jesus didn't break it. The smoking flax shall he not quench. We can depend on that. Jesus won't quench you. He won't. The Father loves the Son. You see, you, see, you, start, you see why the Father loves the Son? The Son's lovely. He shall not fail. You can trust in Him. The Father can trust in the Son. He wouldn't fail, nor be discouraged. Till he has set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. Now John, remember him, he bare witness of him, and he cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he cometh after me, is preferred before me, for he was before me. See, there was a, there's a reason. It's not that John just held him in high regards because he was related to him. I've heard that. No, he was preferred before him because he was before him. And his, of his fullness have we all received. Amen. Yeah, you believe today? Well, you've received of his fullness. Amen. Are you walking by faith today? Well, you've received of his fullness. Amen. Have you found favor with God today? You've received of his fullness. Amen. Are you overcoming? Are you, do you have joy? You're looking forward to heaven? You've received of his fullness. For the Father loveth the Son. See, it's, a, it's more than, than a fleshly love. It's just, you see the love of God and it's, it'll overwhelm you. And that's the good thing. We need to be overwhelmed. In a, in a good thing. In a good manner. Well, the Father showeth him some of the things that he's doing. No. He shows him all things. See, nothing came upon Jesus by accident. Jesus didn't have any accidents. He knew all things that were going to come upon him. Jesus knew all things that were going to come upon him. He knew all things that the Father did, all the things that the Father was doing, all the things that the Father would do. Jesus knew it. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it. This is the one who's going to say this now. Just kind of giving you a background here. This is the great God of glory. And spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand. What are all these talk about holding your hand? And I'll keep thee. Keep me from what? Jesus had a mission. He was sent here to do something that we couldn't do. Amen. He had to be kept. He had to have his hand held. He had to be holding up. And I'll give you, give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. To open the blind eyes. Can you see today? Jesus was successful. His mission was successful. If you can see today. Do you have confidence and assurance that you're going to be with him in glory? Are you anticipating being clothed on with the body like in his glorious body? It's because the father loves the son. For a light to the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison house. Hallelujah! We've been set free. 
You remember being bound? Don't remember it too long. But it's good to remember. He set me free. He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Now he said, Jesus comes along and he says, The glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. That they may be one in us. Amen. Oh, this is, see, something, something. Jesus was loved by the Father. Do you know this could have happened? The Father himself loved him. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. He, he didn't say, I might be. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Amen. And I know my sheep and am known of mine. As a father knoweth me, even so know I the father. Amen. Now see, in Christ we can say that. Yes. In Christ, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because you know the Father. And you know the Father loves you. And I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have. I thought it's good to mention us. Amen. Which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, I ain't going to catch this. For this reason doth my Father love me. He's brought all things together in one. Amen. And the Father loves him for it. He says, because I lay down my life and take it up again, my Father loves me because I did that. Because I was willing. Yes. I was a willing sacrifice. He shows him all things. He says in Matthew 11, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. Now that means that there isn't anything that hasn't been delivered to him. And no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. No man. But we can eliminate all other men. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. And he, to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Do you know him today? See what's happened? He's revealed him to you. This is a personal thing. Jesus has revealed God to you. Amen. Luke 10, he turns to his disciples and he tells them, this has got to be held in high regard. We can't let this fall. This is a high thing God's done. And he told them privately, he said, blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. Yes. You've been, you have a high and lofty place, brethren. You've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit that you might know the things that are freely yours. They belong to you. Amen. All the promises, exceeding great and precious promises, they belong to you. He says, for the promises unto you and unto your children, as many as are far off. You believe the record which God gave of his son? Well, see, a lot of things coming your way. He says, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Now, haven't we been blessed? We've been blessed in Christ. Jesus is worth loving. Amen. See, the Father loves the Son. Now, this sacrifice... It's a solemn occasion. Every time I think of Jesus in the garden, he's uh, this is the same night. He had the pilgrim, they sat there, and the betrayer had gone out, and he um they leave the, the, the room there and they Matthew 26 says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto his disciples, Sit here, ye here, and while I go yonder and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. I'm going to take some folks with me, some of the brethren with me here. 
You can imagine this. He leaves them here. He says, now you sit here. And then you three, you come with me. We're going to go over here. And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he didn't keep it to himself. This was Jesus was in need. You got to see this. Jesus had a need. And he told them, he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He's asking them. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Hebrews says that who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, he was heard in that he feared. This is, this is the king of kings now. The Lord of lords. He had a mission. And he comes back to his disciples. Verse 40, he says, And he findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into the temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went again a second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, thy will be done. Hebrews 5 says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. He was the only begotten of the Father, and he had learned obedience. Luke 22 says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in, in an agony, he prayed the more earnest. And his sweat was, it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And he came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. It has occurred to me that he, he needed to be strengthened. He needed to be strengthened. Perhaps this is why he took three of his disciples with him, to tarry with him. I thought, I want to I wanna be more alert. Be more alert to the brethren's needs. He... The father loved him, and the answer was no. It was no. There is no other way. There is no other way. I don't think it was by accident that this happened in a garden. If you remember right, it was in a garden when man chose to disobey God. The man chose his own will over the will of the father. Chose to go his own way. Chose to turn his face from the truth. And here Jesus stood in a garden and said, Nevertheless, even though I die, thy will be done. Amen. And the father loved the son. He sent an angel, didn't he? He sent an angel there. To my son, go strengthen my son. Go strengthen the one that I love. Yes. God loves you. <laughs> He's going to strengthen you too. Amen. And being made perfect, Hebrews 5, 9, He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey Him. Amen. See, well, he got victory in the garden. He? <laughs> he got victory. He said, not my will, thy will be done. And he was able to go to the cross. See, if he hadn't got victory in the garden, he could have never, never withstood the cross. It would never happen. I mean, he took, didn't he tell him, don't you know that I could presently call ten legions of angels or whatever it was? Don't you know that? Yeah. He, 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 but he went to the cross. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. He came. 
And the father loved him because of that. He loved him. He did. I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. Yes. Some incentive there. So now, you know, the angel comes and what are they talking about? What's well, probably the joy that was set before him. Whatever he needed to endure the cross. Because that's what's coming next. That's what's coming next. Psalms 22 kind of opens up a little bit of the dialogue going through his mind on the cross. We, we know it. You can't minimize Jesus' cross. Don't minimize that. I mean, he went through more than anybody's ever gone through. And he went through it for you, the cost of sin. But the Father loved him because of it. See, this, is, this, is, this will touch your heart. He said, I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot. This is the Son of God now. See, his flesh was dying. So this is the fact. He was laying down his life that he might take it up again. See, it wasn't the end of it. My tongue cleaves to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the Dust of death. What's he talking about? His father. The one that loves him. He, God may ask us to go through some stuff. He very well may. But that's because he loves us. It's because he loves us. And there's a place, there's a place in eternity that has your name written on it. But in order for you to inhabit it, there may be some suffering to go along with that. It's for the joy that's set before us that will endure our cross. Amen. Did all, be not thou far from me, O Lord, my strength. <laughs> See how he's getting the victory here? He's getting the victory. It's, he's dying, but yet he's casting his care upon the Lord. Be don't, don't be far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Hasten thee to help me deliver my soul from the sword. He did not want to be separated from the Father. He didn't. This one who had never been separated from the Father. He didn't want his Father to turn, as it were, his face from him. He didn't want that. He said, save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. He heard him, and that he feared. Jesus was the lamb which God had provided for himself. He was the lamb. He was the lamb that was caught in the thicket of God's purpose. He was right there. And there would be no substitution for him. There would be no angel that stopped this. Lamentations, he says, Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold, and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. When God laid on him the iniquity of us all, and he who knew no sin was made to be sin. And God's wrath, the fullness of his wrath was expelled on Jesus. And he took the full brunt of the blow. And he turned, as it were, his face from him. Nature even revolted. It became dark. It was a dark time. God was dealing with sin. And it was our sin. He took it away. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. This is the man. And the, he, he didn't lift up his voice. He didn't cry out. He didn't accuse people. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray and we've turned everyone to his own way. 
and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Why? Because the Father loved the Son. He loved him. And it was the only way. This was the only one that could take the sin of the whole world and come back. It's the only one. And who shall declare his generation? We can speak up and say, me, Lord. I'll declare it. I'll stand up and say, I'm proud to be associated with Jesus. Because he, on that dark day, associated himself with me. Amen. For the transgression of my people. See how God's identifying with us. These are my people. And I'm not going to let them go. I'm going to send my son and I'm going to get my people back. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. There was no deceit found in his mouth. There's the only one that could come back from the dead. He descended into the, he preached to the captives. He said, the day of liberty has come. And he took off the doors of the prison house and Satan couldn't say a word. This one that had held the prisoners captive for so long had to let him go. Say, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That's why it pleased him. Because he was setting the captives free. He made his soul an offering for sin. Oh, that I can see more clearly what that means. See, sin, it may look pretty, but this is what it cost. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Amen. God is satisfied with Jesus. The sacrifice took away the curse. Now there's a bright day coming. A bright day. See, we, now we have a hope. An eternal hope. One that doesn't fade away. One that's reserved in heaven for you. Because the Father loves the Son. That's why. Jonah said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. He heard me. That's what Jesus would tell us. He heard me. He didn't, my soul didn't see corruption. Didn't I rose from the dead? Triumphant. Because the Father loves me. I, the same one that gave me the power to lay my life down, gave me the power to take it up again. Because he loves me. Several times God just couldn't hold back. <laughs> he had to tell the world about Jesus. Several times a voice came from the heavens. <laughs> Amen. He said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. Hear him. They said we saw him. The apostles, they said, we saw his majesty. We, we saw it. Oh, brother, pretty soon we're going to see the fullness of his majesty. Because the Father loves the Son. He's given, he's given this, this, this second coming. Think of all the, the good that's come from us waiting. It's kept us on our toes. And the glory... <clears throat> Which thou gavest me, I have given them. This is something that he has given. It's something that we have received. Otherwise, we couldn't be one. He says that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect and one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. 
So how much does God love you? Brother Ricky is going to go into that. Just like he loves the son. That's what he says. I think we've amply demonstrated the father loves the son. He loves him. He doesn't do anything without him. It's like an example to us. We don't want to do anything without him either. We, we love the son too. He's only done us good. Amen. He'll never do us evil. He'll never steer us in the wrong direction. Never ask us to do anything that's too hard. He's lovable. The father loves the son. Thank you.